Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the first of many coaching examinations of NBA teams, offenses, defenses, and everything in between. Today, we're going to be having a look at the Los Angeles Clippers and their game against the Houston Rockets. We are going to be pulling apart the aspects of their game that lead them to the fourth highest defensive rating in the NBA and how they reach third in defensive rebounding despite having one of the shorter teams in the league. Specifically, we're going to be having a look at their box style defense and how they use movement and help along with off-ball pressure to successfully cause turnovers and contest shots. The Clippers have a lot of intensity on the defensive end as well as a lot of activity on both sides of the ball that have them listed as genuine contenders for the 2019-2020 NBA Championship. Let's get into it. In this clip, we can see that the Clippers have already set up in a 1-2-2 set defensive format, or a box. We see that the man guarding Russell Westbrook when Covington has the ball on the wing, is playing the passing lane as well as Kawhi on Harden. We see that Kawhi isn't over committing on the shifty and speedy James Harden as to not risk an easy backdoor cut and a layup. Knowing that Zubach is a much bigger body in the paint, one of the defensive anchors on the floor, Patrick Beverly, pulls Zubach down to the low block so he can use his 7 foot frame to play the split position if an interior drive was to occur, and also his 7 foot 4 wingspan to eventually contest the corner shot from PJ Tucker. This switch of positions also allows the handsy Pat Bev to hassle the ball players to force bad passes and, potentially, a turnover. On this next defensive possession, we can clearly see that they have still set themselves up in that box type defense. Kawhi guards up on his man to defend the pick and roll and potentially get hands on the switch. As the pick and roll doesn't occur, the Rockets player backs off and cuts to the corner. We can see that Kawhi plays close to the free throw line, which I like to call nail, so he can collapse on the driving Harden, but also have enough time to contest the spot up corner three from the above average shooting Daniel House. It is clear that Marcus Morris is also getting ready to collapse on Harden if he takes a drive to the right. As the passing lane defenders have denied the kickoff from Harden, he is forced to make his own move, and the active hands from Patrick Beverly poke the ball loose, which then has Harden chasing the ball with a running down shot clock. As Harden takes his last drive, he is met at the ring by Zubach, who is perfectly positioned on the split. The rebound is then secured, and the ball is kicked off to the runners for an early fast break opportunity which they are able to convert with Paul George's dunk. In this next clip, the Clippers set up the 2-2-1 again with the box shifted slightly over to Harden's side as he's the Rockets' main point of offense and the defensive interest of the Clippers. As the box takes away the opportunity for cuts and ball reversals, Harden is forced to take a contested three that was never going in. As there were four players set up in the key for the box defense, the rebound can be secured easily as the Clippers already have front position for the box out. This play shows the importance of getting back on defense, having active hands, and always seeing the ball and the player. For this fast break defensive play by the Clippers, the contest on the drive was nice, but it would have been even better to see Montrez Harrell shift down to the split line position and Lou Will help out on the perimeter if Harden made a kickoff from the drive. This would have stopped Harden before he got to the ring rather than potentially allowing him to finish with the contact which he is infamous for by many NBA fans. This next clip shows the amazing eyes by Laundry Shamit, who is able to come across from the weak side to get his hands to the open drive by keeping vertical, maintaining legal guarding position. After the contest, he then sprints back to the top of the perimeter to guard ball, which helps maintain the box. This clip shows the importance of defensive rotations in the box defense, which involves ball, denial, nail, and split, and that all shifts depending on where the ball is. It also demonstrates that the box doesn't need to have players in set positions, rather that the flow of the game should dictate who is guarding what person or area as long as everyone is able to help each other out and recover when necessary. This clip here shows the importance of the collapse on that low post, which forces a bad pass and then the importance of the recovery to force that turnover. Here, we can see that the Clippers set up their box and do the rotations very well. We also see that shifts and switches in the box to help maintain the positioning and contest every shot is what creates the highly contested layup. This defensive play by Reggie Jackson is just wonderful. He's able to stay really strong with Russell Westbrook in the post and then contest his very bad layup. It's awesome to see that Montrose Harrell comes across as well and then is able to get the rebound and kick it off for the fast break. Here, we are able to see that the fast break defense is great by Zubach because he stops the drive early, then moves down to the split line where he belongs and is able to contest the drive if it's there. 
This clip shows great positioning and help on the collapse. Kawhi, who is guarding Harden, has pretty solid perimeter defense but gets lost a little bit when he goes for the drive. Zubac comes across to help out and allows time for Kawhi to come across back and recover. Then they both use their hands to put pressure on his pass. This shows wonderful teamwork and collapse by the Clippers. The great hands and reach of Zubac secure the block and once again help the Clippers get quick chance fast break buckets. We can see that the Clippers are electing to do more of a 2-3 zone. This also shows the importance of nice quick hands and the ability to get on the fast break early and position the floor running the lanes to get the nice three. For this possession, we see that the Clippers play the box defense again and have all the players ready to act in their positions. Paul George is seen to guard his passing lane really well and also is ready to collapse on Harden's drive. The Clippers are really able to shrink the floor for the already one-dimensional Rockets, which causes their shooters and ISO players to take rough drives and deep contested long-range shots like Harden does here, as there's no ability for them to pass it off. This defensive clip simply shows how impactful it is to get your hands on the ball without risking your front position on the player. Here we see the disruption of the dribble and passes along the sideline, which causes a reversal to reset the play. The split line defenders are able to stop the drive, but also have ample time to get a hand out and up to the corner three. Russell Westbrook, being the machine he is, is able to get the rebound over Zubac and then go up for a second shot. But as the box has more than one interior defender, the shot is heavily contested, so Westbrook is forced to kick it out to Covington for the logo shot bomb, causing the 24 second shot clock violation. This clip here shows the ability for the Clippers to get straight into the box defense and also set up wonderful positioning to get hands to every single pass. They contest the drive on Harden, collapse on him, force a kick out, and then a turnover of Covington's hands. Here we are able to see how well the Clippers quickly get back on defense, stop the fast break, set up the box to shrink the floor, and then force drives that the defense is happy to let them have. Here we see Harden has to drive in, gets contested by Pat Bev and Zubac, which means the shot isn't at a 100% efficiency. Here we're able to see how easy it is to make a big impact on a player simply by being there and harassing the ball. We see that Harden is forced to make a bad pass, a bad shot, and then there's a reversal, gets trapped in the corner, and it then has to be kicked out because the shot clock's winding down. Even though Zubac definitely should have boxed out here, the play is then reversed, they reset, they compose themselves, and then they get back to harassing the ball again. This jump shot, pretty contested, and then they get the rebound. Great D. Here we can see that they set up the box, which then means that the ball can't be passed. One hand in the face of Harden forces a bad shot, and then the rebound can be made as they've already got front position because of the defensive set. This clip here just shows the uh, Clippers ability to be able to come across from that split line, help out on the drive, though it would have been nice to see some of the Clippers get on the run early for the fast break. Here's just another perfect example of the split line help, but there definitely should have been someone to contest the pass in the first place. For this defensive possession, we just see how vital it is to be able to collapse on your man, get one or two hands up in his face on the drive because it just creates a very low percentage shot, and then you can push that fast break after the rebound. For this play, we see that the Houston Rockets do a lot of cuts throughout the key, but since the box doesn't allow for these passes on the inside, it means that you have to do a contested pass on the outside, which as we see here, leads to the fast break and Kawhi getting wrapped up for that M1 opportunity. This is just another great example of how Patrick Beverly is able to come across from the opposite split line defense onto the strong side of the court to help out on that shot and push that fast break straight away. For this final play, we see how the Clippers are able to come across from the help line D once the play has been burnt, get that rebound and push trans straight away. So today, we were able to examine the Clippers defense and how effective they were at changing the Houston's offense. We saw that the box defense shrunk the floor, forcing bad passes and contested outside shots. We saw how the movement and teamwork by the Clippers led to a lot of turnovers by the Rockets, as well as just tip passes. Being active with your hands means that you dictate the game. The Clippers had strong split line help and recovery, which made many inside shots a tough one. Being so key prominent, the rebounds were a lot easier to grab due to the Clippers already having that front position that you need. It was great to see all the guys come together and make sacrifices on the defensive end to help one another out. That's why these guys are up in the favourites to win the ring and I completely agree. 
The ability to shut out a player is so important and we've seen time and time again how the Clippers are able to do this. Thank you so much for watching, hope you guys learned something. Make sure you leave a like on the video and if you want more basketball ins and outs, click the subscribe button on my page.